In the photography world, AI and editing has come on leaps and bounds in the last couple of years. But there was one announcement recently that really caught my eye. And that was from a piece of software that I've actually never used before. And it's called Capture One. Now I know this is a, a pretty popular Lightroom alternative, but it's something I've never delved into. And the announcement that caught my eye was something called Match Look. The premise is pretty simple. You can select a target image, copy the look of that image and apply it to another one. Now this got my mind racing because I feel like there's so many different ways that we could take advantage of this. So in today's video, I'm gonna check out how well it works and different methods that I would recommend for getting the best out of it. So let's dive right in. I've got my laptop here and we're gonna be going through some different images. Now, one of the first ways that I thought I could use this piece of software is to mimic the style of some of my favorite photographers. So right here, I've got an image from Short Stash on Instagram, a great photographer, and his editing style is really nice. And I'm gonna use this tool to try and replicate it across a series of portraits that I've selected. So all I need to do is come up here and set match look reference. That will have a look at this image, analyze it for the colors, and then apply it to another image. Right here, I've got a portrait, and I'm just gonna go up here and apply match look. You can see instantly the image has changed and I actually find this really pleasing. You can see it's inherited many of the brown and earthy tones from the original image. That was the reference. I could come in here further and just adjust it a little bit to my liking. Maybe crush those shadows a little bit more. And just like that, we're a pretty great image. That really took me absolutely no effort at all. So pretty impressive so far. Now I've got another one here and I'm just gonna do exactly the same thing. And you can see this one actually looks really good. You can see that instant change in all of the colors. It becomes so much more earthy. Those brown tones come out. The greens are much more muted. And the whole editing of this image is really cohesive. And all I had to do was click one button, which is kind of a little bit mind blowing. I'm gonna come in here and just refine this a little bit more. I'm gonna create a mask around my subject, brighten the exposure a little bit, drop the blacks and shadows, pump the whites, and just like that. That is crazy. Now, of course, I've got shortcuts and everything set up in Lightroom that will really help me, but this is something completely different. This is really quite impressive to me. Now, I've got an image here that's not of RAW at all. This is actually already edited as a JPEG, but I thought I'd just have a go to see what it looks like. You can see here that the white balance was a little bit messed up. Let's see if we can fix that. It looks a little green. And there we go. That is kind of crazy to me. We had an image that had kind of a baked in look that was completely different. I've applied that match look and it's changed it completely in a way that would be a little bit difficult otherwise. So there we go. Three portraits that have mimicked the look of this original one. And I think they've all worked really quite well. So use case number one, having a look at seeing if you can mimic your favorite photographer's editing style. And I would say that that was a pretty successful experiment. Now what we're gonna move on to is something slightly different. I've actually got some screenshots here from the Batman movie. Now this movie was particularly well color graded and I'm gonna see if that color can transfer across into some images that I took recently on a trip to Chicago. So let's have a go at that right now. Wow, okay. Just unbelievable. Just look at that. It completely changed the, the look and feel of this image. It applied what is essentially a Batman themed preset to my image in two seconds with one click. I didn't have to pay anything. That's kind of crazy. I've got another one right here. Let's see if we can do that. Same again. I prefer the first one, but this one is still pretty good, I would say. And there we go. Just an idea for you. If you've got a particularly favorite movie, just download a bunch of screenshots of the image, use this match look tool, and it's a simple way to get exactly the same color grade as you had. You can see here in the before, a little bit muddy, I would say, a little bit browny, a little bit greeny, not so great on the contrast. It's fixed all of that. It's got those nice warm undertones. The architecture really pops now with this kind of yellowy browny strength of contrast. That little red sign in the middle is really popping because it's taken that kind of orangey Batman look and applied it directly to my scene. Honestly, really, really impressed so far. Now, another one. I've got a couple of macro shots here. So I'm using another one of Short Stash's images where he's color graded this incredible full leaf. And right here, I've got a shot of a mushroom that I took in Scotland. Now, I'm interested to see how this tosses up. Can it change my kind of greeny spring look to more of an autumnal, orangey, deep red look? So there's only one way to find out. I'm gonna 
set the match look reference, come down here and apply my match look. Okay, you can see here the two different images. If I wanted to get a little bit closer, I'd probably just crush the blacks a little bit more, up the contrast, bring down the shadows, make it a little bit warmer maybe, and then come down here to my color editor, take those greens, make them more yellowy, bring down the luminance, take the yellows more to a red, how far we can push this. There we go. So you can see this one, pretty successful, but I still need a little bit of knowledge to get it a little bit in my mind more similar to what my original reference image was. But a lot of that work was taken on by Capture One. All I needed to do for the base level of those colors and that contrast was just apply that match look. And then it was up to me just to tweak a few more additional settings to get closer to the look that I actually wanted big time saver in an editing style that I wouldn't normally go for and I really like this image. I've got another one here of some flowers. I'll see how well this stacks up. You can see not so not so well on this one I would say. I think it's kind of missed the mark. The greens are standing out too much and you know what I'm not even going to bother trying to edit this one to get a little bit closer. You can see that sometimes when the images are perhaps too different, when there's too big of a gap, even though it's a raw image and there's all that flexibility, it may kind of fall short in those scenarios. So good to know the limitations. Really impressed with this image. This one was a little bit too much for it. Okay, so, so far we've applied a portrait to a portrait and then a macro type image to another macro type image. Well, what happens if we cross over? So what I'm gonna try now is I'm gonna grab that macro type image from short stash with those reds and everything. I'm gonna get that as my reference photo. And then I'm gonna come down to a landscape type photo and apply it on that to see what it looks like. And you can see it's done pretty well. It's kind of warmed up those sandy tones at the bottom and really is quite a pleasing image all around. I'm going to try again on this bothy as well. Probably not a look that I would want to go for, but it is stylistic and it's applied it to the best of its ability. Here we've got another image from Black Sail on Instagram and I'm going to come into one of my things here and apply it. Wow. Okay. It's done a really good job again. This image looks great. I would happily go and post this somewhere. All the colors, really harmonious. It's done a great job of mimicking this shot right here. We've got some more, a shot in Albania of my friend Ryan. Again, fantastic job. And one last one, let's try it. Not so great. I'll probably take that on and edit it a little bit more. We've seen now what that editing tool can do. And I think it has really impressive capabilities. You've been able to do this in Photoshop for a while now, but it doesn't work nearly as well and it's a far more convoluted process. This is really user-friendly, really quick, really simple, and works really well, I would say. You saw that there are some limitations. When I'm trying to apply a look from an image that has a completely different color palette to one that just doesn't match, then it doesn't work. It just looks a little bit horrible. Sometimes it will wash out the colors and it's just not a good time. But in there's certain scenarios in there where it works brilliantly and I got the exact look that I wanted. Some other things that you could do is, let's say I really liked some of those looks that I just applied. Well, I could save that as a preset and then I can just apply it to all the photos that I take. Now I already know that there are probably gonna be a lot of ethical discussions about this. Someone like Shortstash has spent decades refining his creative style and now I can effectively steal it with just two clicks. How do I feel about that? A little bit conflicted, if I'm honest with you. On the one hand, this is something that I would have loved to have had when I first started photography because I can take a look, apply it to my work and see what my work looks like adjacent to theirs. It will give me a good understanding of what it is that I do and don't like about the images I'm taking. It'll also allow me to go through the sliders and see what kind of settings it thinks that that photographer put on their images and I would be able to learn so much from that. It would be really useful. On the other hand, as a photographer who takes pride in their work, I can see why this would be a little bit tricky. I've spent years figuring out editing and making sure that everything aligns and looks good and now someone from the internet can just steal all of that knowledge almost in a couple of minutes. And if that's the overriding feeling that you have, I'd compel you to look at it a little bit deeper. Personally, I do still think it's a good thing because it takes away that kind of barrier to entry. It means that certain things like composition are gonna become far more important 
because that's the true thing that's going to set your photos apart. Without having to think so much about the editing, you can focus more on the creativity, which is a lot like the workflow that I love of the Fuji X100 series so much. Because I'm snapping JPEGs, it's all about what the actual composition of the image looks like, the angle that I'm taking it from. Um, I'm doing most of the work in the moment to make sure the image is great before it ever hits my editing suite. And this is just another example that great images will always be great images. So if you're a beginner watching this and you want to understand some editing techniques a little bit more, I would download Capture One right now and have a go at it yourself. They offer a free trial, so I didn't pay anything to make this video despite never having used Capture One before. And if you're a seasoned photographer thinking, this has all got a little bit silly now and it's gone too far, don't worry about it too much. Your creativity is what sets you apart and you'll continue to create great images no matter what suite of editing tools everyone else is using. Let me know in the comments section down below what you think of Capture One and the Match Look tool. Will you be using it? Are you against it? Do you think it's a little bit cheeky? I'd love to know your opinions. That's it for today. It's just a little fun video and I hope you enjoyed it. I upload videos like this every single week. So if you like this one, maybe consider subscribing to my channel. I'll see you next time.